So welcome to theory versus practice. Uh, the pitfalls you can fall into when doing user testing in a classroom environment. Um, a little bit of context. Uh, I'm a programmer, so I don't really have a lot of experience with uh, interaction design or user experience. Uh, but my thesis was with interaction design and user experience. So that was a little bit daunting, but I thought, I've taken some courses, I've read books, I've seen people do it. How hard can it be, right? So uh, as a good researcher, I started doing my theoretical data gathering. And I read articles, I read the Norwegian Directorate for guidelines for what students at the level that I was studying were supposed to learn. My user group was ninth graders uh, in secondary school, ungdomsskolen. So I needed to map out what they were supposed to learn. I essentially learned, uh, read their books uh, to know what kind of things that they had already been learning from their school or their education or classroom. Uh, I also relearned chemistry because I needed some domain experience. Uh, and um, I checked out previous uh, existing technologies to see what already existed that could support students with learning about the periodic table of elements. And most importantly of all, I interviewed teachers and I interviewed uh, students because I needed to map out the problem areas when learning about the topic that they needed to learn about. Um, and also, how would the teachers be teaching them? What kind of technologies would they be using? What kind of books they would be using? And so on and so forth. Um, so all of this data gathering gave me an idea. I had an idea for what I wanted to uh, create as a prototype and what I wanted to test. And the measures I took were basically what I mentioned about books and articles and such, but also trying to follow certain design patterns and making sure that the, col the colors uh, correspond with existing uh, images of the periodic table of elements, that how they're presented in books. Um, also making sure that it's as simple as possible with um, very little distraction and easy usability, trying to make sure it's as intuitive as possible. Uh, and also, of course, adding cool and uh, fancy references to uh, things that the teens of today can relate to. You know, references to slime and stuff. So uh, anyway, I thought like, of course, I've I've done all this research and I've read about how it's supposed to be done and I've taken courses and I've um, done tests of um, prototypes before. So obviously I'm prepared to be able to test this out in the field. Uh, the problem was, uh, as the famous comedian Eddie Izzard once quoted, the best laid plans of mice and men oft go aglay, which means they go wrong, essentially. So the first pitfall that you all should be aware of is um, going straight to high fidelity. When I wanted to create this prototype, um, I did not, I made some drawings and I made some references to previous technologies, of course, and then I just went ham. I started building React buildings and just um, hard coding everything, essentially, just to make sure I had something I could test and use in the classroom environment. Uh, and it worked, it was functional. Uh, it was essentially um, a small periodic table of elements that was interactive. You could drag and drop uh, elements and create reactions and groupings, uh, and then you could read about them. Um, and this was supposed to allow students a new experience with learning about the periodic table of elements, considering that usually it's very static. Uh, you have an image and you have the teacher talking about this, but you have no way of actually conceptualizing something so abstract like atoms actually reacting with each other. So adding imagery and stuff like that was supposed to allow these students to visualize their problems and learn a little bit better about the periodic table of elements and the elements properties. But when doing this high fidelity prototyping, I didn't think that much about how these functionalities that I added was supposed to of whether or not they were going to be effective. I didn't have any paper tests. I didn't have any low prototype, uh, low fidelity prototypes. So I, I was a little bit blind to that because I thought, I mean, this is based on previous technology. It's obviously if that technology has worked and this is supposed to be better, then this should work fine. 
So the second pitfall was me going to the classroom and suddenly being hit with the realization that I'm not a teacher. There I was in a classroom with a lot of teens just like staring at me and judging me and whatever I was supposed to present to them and not having any curriculum or anything. I had observed these classroom sessions and seen how the teacher would plan and give them tasks. And while my test was essentially supposed to be uh, going in there and asking them to experiment, it was not something they were used to. This was not a format in their classroom that they were used to. This was me entering their domain with a new format of education. Uh, I, was, I had been used to going, uh, after having been to university, I was used to being handed something and told, figure it out. And that allowed me to essentially learn how to explore uh, applications and explore the internet or explore whatever it is that I was handed. This was not something that they were used to. They were used to being given tasks that would uh, ex exponentially ex increase in difficulty and that would allow them to understand how they were supposed to work with this. They also expected a point with the classroom session. When I told them to just experiment and see what you could find, uh, see what kind of un achievements you could unlock, because that was also uh, an aspect of my prototype, they, uh, throughout the classroom session, would ask, What's, what are we supposed to do? What's the point? What are, we, what are we meant to be achieving here? So they didn't really realize that just experimenting and um, looking at the application and playing with it is a point in itself. And I was not clear enough to describe that to them. Um, so pitfall number three is called multiple representations. Now, so far the testing that I, I had been doing was in one school that I was collaborating with. Uh, and all my observations, my interviews, my testing, and my pre preliminary testing was done in that school. But when I took my prototype and my testing session uh, to a new one, it was still the same classroom, uh, like it was still ninth graders, it was still the same topic, but they had completely different books and the teacher focused on completely different things. Uh, they still uh, followed the rules that were written in UDIR's uh, guidelines, the Norwegian Directorate of Education. They still followed those guidelines, but how the teacher was teaching them was different. Uh, the teacher would focus more on experimentation, using different technologies, understanding the whole concept, than teaching the students about specific properties of elements and focusing on um, how they would react and such. Uh, so there was a little bit of a difference there. So when I set up my test environment and when I uh, wrote down their tasks, um, one of the tasks were, what are the properties of an element and how do they help categorize an element? And in the beginning it went fine. I managed to explain the tasks and I gave them a, a, a slight, um, what's it called, a demonstration on how to use the application. But as the class session, classroom session went on, the teacher came over to me and said, you know, I think these questions might be a little bit too difficult for the level of these students. They don't know what properties means and they don't understand what element is supposed to be. And that is because in this school, they mostly referred to atoms as atoms, not elements. Uh, in the previous school, uh, the students, when they were asked uh, questions from the teachers, they would answer using these phrases, as such as properties and elements. But in this new school, they didn't. So that led, again, to confusion. They were clear, a little bit clear, on what they were supposed to do, but they still didn't understand their goals fully. Um, and this allowed, like, so summarized, there was not enough control testing, there was little communication with the teachers, and there was not enough uh, domain experience for me. They would ask me questions that I didn't know about. Um, and the reason why I mentioned the con communication with teachers is their role in this classroom could have been much bigger if I had planned it that way. They have domain expertise both in re relation to education they are teachers, and in relation to um, chemistry, because they know what level that these students are supposed to learn uh, about this, about this topic. And also they are familiar. They bring a sense of familiarity and stability to the classroom setting. So the students are not surprised by someone new coming into their environment and introducing something new in a way that they haven't experienced before. So 
Of course, these were all products of me having very little time and needing to finish things uh, with certain deadlines. Uh, and there are a lot of could have, should have, would have where I could have started testing earlier or done certain things in a controlled environment and, of course, gotten help from teachers. But again, I tested this one last time with the previous school. And then I had taken these experiences that I had with the students, both from the first test and the second, and I managed to present, like the prototype itself, it didn't ha go through a lot of changes. There were some few uh, usability changes that I needed to make, but for the most part, I changed how I presented it to fit more with how the teachers presented their topics to the classroom. And at that point, the only complaint that I got was there was too little to do. Going from I don't know what I'm doing, I don't see what the point of this is, I don't know how to do this, to there isn't much to do, is a huge step. Because then they are allowed by removing these factors, these stress factors of, not, uh, of uncertainty and uh, worry, they can focus solely on the aspect of using the prototype and doing their tasks. So I know that the setting that I've used is very specific. It's about learning about the periodic table of elements in a classroom setting uh, with ninth graders. But this can be applied to other settings as well. You need to know what kind of terminology is used for whatever it is that you're going to be presenting. If, it is, if it's a setting where there is an authority or an expert role that uh, distributes something to other roles, then you need to have domain experience to know how it is presented so it doesn't confuse and shock those you're presenting it to. And um, essentially, the reason uh, is that all these examples that I've given to you so far have been prat practical examples of pitfalls. Uh, they all tie into the main pitfall that we all fall into, and that is relying too much on one thing. Relying too much on your own experience or relying too much on theory. And of course, relying too much on your own experience is faulty because our experiences are not universal. We are all different. But relying too much on theory um, allows, like, isn't helpful until you've actually practiced as well. You understand theory much better once you have you see how it applies to your situation. When you do uh, practical things with your application, you finally see how does this theory apply to my situation, and that makes you understand the theory much better as well. So the point is essentially just make mistakes, learn from these pitfalls, fall into them, if either accidentally or, well, you're most likely not going to fall into them on purpose. But if you do fall into them, it gives you a chance to learn and it gives you a chance to grow. And the reason why user experience has become more popular and more sought after after all these years is that because our experiences are not universal, understanding them allows us to help each other in much better ways. So yeah, that's it for me. It's been nasty. <laughs>